helps if you unmute yourself. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Thank you. Sorry, sorry about uh, everything. Thank you for letting me know that I didn't have any mic audio going on. Um, yeah, let me... I can turn the creepy music off, too. I need one moment for that. No, the creepy music's fine. I like it. That is all... Uh, that's actually all Tron Maximum's music, too. Because he also does music stuff. Let me just find the right browser for it. Bomb. Oh, God, the music's still playing. It's coming from inside the house. Oh. Okay, I found it. Okay, okay. We're here, we're here, we're back. It's after dark. Um, we just had... Uh, you got real David Lynch up in here. Uh, so we're just going to chill. We're going to get real chill back and um, hang out a little bit. We've got some big announcements that we're going to hit up with you. And so I want to get a whole bunch of people in here. Uh, I want to uh, leverage all of you guys. We've been doing a lot of work on this side. Now I'm like, all right, it's your turn. Your turn to go bring all the people in here um, because I want to show you something that has been blowing my mind ever since it came in our email. And uh, this has been something that I've just been – this is the thing I've been the most excited about. We Everyone kind of here has got their own thing that they're the most excited about, but this one's like, this one's my baby because um, it has some really cool functionality. Um, it's not it's it's not quite a game. It's a game holder. Uh, we have on our hands the Pirate Launcher, and I want to show you guys what the Pirate Launcher is because it is blowing my mind, and so I want to bring as many people in here as possible uh, in the meantime, while you tweet out Indie 3 existing and happening, while you uh, post to Facebook and Reddit that Indie 3 is real, that it's live, and that it's happening, uh, I'm going to show you some super cool stuff. The kind of stuff that's like the Indie version of what you would see at E3. Um, this I love this launcher a lot because I think it's something that uh, does things that Steam can't. And... Because of that, it's very, very important to me. Um, and I think it's some things that you'll really, really enjoy playing with. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like the pirate cart stuff from Glorious Trainwrecks. On the nose. Nice. Um, I'm not sure if it's by the same exact person. But um, it also has to do with the pirate, right? Which those all kind of go in common. Uh, but the pirate launcher is the shit. And you should all get really hyped about that. Um, today, we've had just an amazing day today. Uh, we put this whole show together in the last four days, and the things that you guys have accomplished in these last, in the last, not even 20 hours, how long is, how long have we been live? 12 hours, if that? Eight. Seven. It feels like a lot longer, but we've been up for eight hours. That's it. And the stuff that we've done, we've showed probably about 30 games, and we're going to show more tonight after I show you guys the Pirate Launcher. Um, all of the people that we've talked to, the friends that we've made, um, it's just been amazing. And it's going to get more amazing as the time goes on because this is just the first day. And usually when like a convention is like, oh, it, this is just the first day. There's still two or three more. It's like, no, we've got seven more days. And all the days after this will be even more organized and more understanding of what we're doing, um, but also with more complications. So today it was like, all right, we're just running one stream and getting it all done. Um, and then you have Warp Door on the other on the other uh, stream. Tomorrow, it's like, all right, we're running two streams side by side for uh, eight hours. That's going to be a new challenge. We're going to figure out how that goes. But we're going to have games on one side. We're going to have panels on the other. And you're going to just get to pick and choose and enjoy all of it. It's going to be all for the taking for you. Um, and some amazing panels tomorrow. Uh, let me just pull up some of these. What's on the schedule? Um, tomorrow, very first panel I've, is something that I put together that I'm really, really excited about. Um, I've got some of the best 3D artists coming in to talk about 3D art. Ah, huh, thank you, God. Um, this is just a, a quick snapshot. This is today. Today, we're on rows. And so tomorrow is the row beneath that. Um, but creating 3D art is a panel featuring Alice Effect, Ori House, and, um, oh gosh, what's his name? We uh, just did him today. Nick Tringali. Uh, we hyped... No, we haven't hyped one of his games. Because one of his games is... This one. Sundogs. Sundogs is his game. That's right. I'm getting good at this. Uh, 
So yeah, creating 3D art, we're just going to talk about what it means to create 3D art. Um, we also have a playful discussion of games and work, which I'm very, very excited about. Who is that with? I don't recognize the title itself. So I think they must have changed the title. Oh, oh, that's Byrne. That's Stephen Byrne and Austin Howes. Oh, we're going to hear from Austin and Stephen Byrne, and they're going to talk about playfulness, which is probably one of the most important themes of game design and uh, work design, even, if you want to go that far in their discussion. Um, we're going to talk about interdisciplinary design on zero budget. We have room on Tuesday in three places, it looks like. So if you have a panel that you want to do, please email us. We'd love to hook you up for these slots. Um, and then we have the evening. The evening is open. Um, but yeah, some really, really cool panels going on that were just put together over the last three days. Um, so if you wouldn't mind bringing it back to me, those are going to happen tomorrow. And I'm very, very excited about that. Um, <laughs> what is an indie game? I love India gaming. Thank you. Thank you, GFLP. Helpful. Love it. Um, no, that's not that. We've had a lot of tabs today. Um, and a lot of those tabs are things that I'm going to show you in a little bit. So get hyped about that. Um, so everyone who's in here, what's our count at, my dear sir? 718. Holy crap, there's 718 of you guys. Uh, that is absolutely amazing and groundbreaking and astonishing. And people are going to take note of that. That's the power that you guys have. Um, is that this is real, this is happening. Um, and the funny part about it is that that's not like a 718 that's like slowly diminished over time as part of the stream just wearing long. That's just like we're between time zones and some groups are asleep and some groups aren't. Uh, this is just that little uh, loop in the end. So the UK people aren't awake yet is basically what it is right now. Um, so I'm so, I'm so, so excited about that. Uh, any tweets that you guys make... Uh, we love, love seeing all the creative stuff that you guys have come up with. Um, and also, shout out to all of the people in chat who have been... Oh, 808 viewers bump. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, all of you guys in chat, uh, we've just been astounded. Every single person that's kind of come through our Skype chats or our Mumble chats to be like, Hey, how's 83 going? Uh, just wanted to let you guys know that your chat room is kind of awesome. And I'm having a great time just hanging out and chatting with people. So... Kudos to you guys for being an amazing chat room. Like, that's an important part of all of these kinds of community efforts is uh, the collaborative community group that we put together. Um, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Uh, you guys, it's it's amazing. Uh, without further ado, I don't want to waste your time anymore. I want to get you to the good stuff. So, uh, God, if you would please flip to the computer screen. I'm going to upload this. This is the Pirate Bay bundle 2.0 and this is an open source uh, program client that you can use to open up any game through a text file and right now we have uh, it comes along with seven games all its own just for fun and we haven't played any of them but this is a uh, this is a very boring just sorted list I just want to read what all these things are but I can just go BAM and now, look at all this stuff we've got. We've got thumbnails for each one, all nicely organized and put together. Um, and we can click any of these things and launch that EXE right out of um, things. So, like, if you are anything like me, if you're like this guy, you are going to have a whole, like, download folder just full of random EXEs. It's like, oh, yeah, these are people's games. that They're really nice. I grabbed them off RPG Maker. Or I grabbed them off HIO. I don't have anywhere to put them because Steam doesn't just automatically uh, rule over all of the land for me and without letting me uh, do anything with my games except for anything they allow to do, like some kind of cruel regime. If you're not in Steam and you have a whole bunch of EXEs lying around, this is what you can use to sort them, and it looks amazing. We've got a whole bunch of different things you can do with it. You can sort it by the number of plays. You can sort it randomly. You can sort it by A through Z. This is so, so, so basic and simple we can just grab a game and it's running done this is a dummy game this is not even a real game <laughs> this isn't a real game um i'm not sure if any of these are actually games or if they're uh 
Yeah, I think they're all just for the example. I'll download it along with it. That's cool. Some dude last name website dot com. Website dot derp. It is instead replaced with the cassette and crossbones image. Oh, this is an example of a folder that does not have a screenshot available. Or have an icon for the home screen. Oh, okay. Can we play Space Jelly? No, the dummy game also. Okay, so yeah, all of these are examples like super long title, plus there are also special characters. Jeez, this is ridiculous. Testing stuff, you know? Testing stuff. So all of this is totally like the the coolest thing that I have really, really seen today. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you guys because I thought that you guys would love this. Mosh Boy put this together. Um, the thing about it is that it was going to cost money because it's reasonable. It's a really functional program and he wanted to I wanted to help him get a couple bucks. It is on itch.io for free, and that is something that just came along. Uh, you usually want to like, you know, pay for some kind of nice something nice for this kind of software. Um, but no, no, he's like, you know what? For Indie Three, for you guys, for all of us who have been just working our asses off to get this thing put together, the Pirate Bay Bundle 2.0 is free for anyone to use, for you to share with your friends, to organize all of your EXEs, and make them look nice. Just make them look good. So, yeah. <laughs> On top of everything, um, for those who have a whole bunch of games just kind of floating around that aren't in Steam and want a nice place to just organize and localize all of them, uh, this is the Pirate Bay Bundle 2.0. And on top of everything, I can give you guys all the link right now? Question mark? I still don't really have a way to, um, if you would mind switching the camera, sir. Thank you. Um, don't want to show you all my secrets. I don't have much of a way to get from here to chat, but I'll give it, I'll spend a little bit of time just to get you there. Because y'all are worth it, you know that? Aha, I am the 810th viewer of Indie 3 right now. Thank you guys for being here. This means so much. Sign into chat. Oh, God. Uh, TJ, why did we make the thing, like, a million characters long? <laughs> that password is ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's just a phrase. It's really hard to type out on a keyboard. I blame Cordy. Um Are you a Dvorak? Ah, Dvorak for life. Um, there we go. Boom. It's done. It's double done. All right. Double done. Sounds great to me. Um That's what I want to show you guys. I I want to know what you guys think about uh that kind of stuff. Because it's this is the kind of thing that we can look at at Indie 3. Uh, it's not it's not a game, and I don't want to get super bent up about that. Um, but, like, it was obviously not made to necessarily be a game. It was meant to be a functional program to help people uh, with their games. Um, and so usually that kind of thing wouldn't necessarily have programming in certain places. Um, but we can do that here, and we can support the people who make this kind of work here, and that's a space that we can provide <laughs> Any three password that is very long. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, DW. That is actually uh most of the password. It's actually just that twice. We're at the space disco. That's where we're at. The Windows 98 screensaver of Doom. Yeah. Um so <laughs> yeah, uh what did you guys think of that whole thingamajig? Oh, on uh what about itch.io? Is the source available? Um, you know what? I'm actually not sure if uh, the source is available right now or if that's something. Uh, I just gave them the link. 
Oh, is there? There's an updated version that we just got in our email today. Please, yeah, post it in chat uh, if there's an updated version. Oh, is there a Pirate Bundle version on Mac too? Ooh, that's amazing. Uh, yes, we do have two sites. We have Indie 3, we have Indie 4. Uh, we also have Indie Haven, so twitch.tv, uh, hitbox.tv backslash Indie Haven. Um, that will be where all of the stuff uh, is tonight, tomorrow, I think around that area. Um, there you go. Tron Maximum's got it. Tron Maximum's got it for you. Boy. Good boy. Always there. Um, let's hit this up for real, though. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of games to show you. And oops, that's not what I wanted. I want to start with something that is very, very near and dear to my heart. Uh, thank you, Bill. This is Condor, and before we even get started, this is just a 50-second video. Uh, I might just get so into this that I just sit down and play it, but if you've ever played uh, Connor Sherlock's The Rapture is here and you will be forcibly removed from your home, same guy, completely different game, and this is Condor. Do they have sound? Well, it's not very helpful if there's no sound. That's kind of uh, most of the thing. No sound? We've got no sound for this. Um, <laughs> you know, to build ambience, you need like the imagery and the sound. Not that I know of, but it should be. We haven't moved anything. All right, let's uh, let's get some. Take your time. Thank you, scratch card. Thank you. Thank you. Hey James, we've got no sound. This, yeah, there's that Luigi thumbnail that was in there. Oh, Indy Santa isn't real. Low bros, no. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. So we're not getting audio, and we know that for sure. This is actually a game that you can download right now, by the way. Uh, it is for freeze on Game Jolt. Yeah, I'm just going to pick it up while we're dealing with stuff. Do we? Okay. That, that, yeah. Oh, did I just X out of Chrome? Yes, I did. <laughs> All right, everything is, everything should be okay. Yeah, I don't know how that got. That's weird. I, I mean. And now. Open. So. Are you guys hearing the the thing is playing, so there we go.
It makes so much more sense with the audio, right? It makes so much more sense. Oh, Akisterson. Akisterson. Uh, Akisterson needs help with tile maps. Um, if anyone can help with their Indie 3 Jam entry, <laughs> it's a badly paid gig. Bless you, Akisterson. Thank you. Thank you for all of your work. Uh, if anyone just wants to take a stab at making tile maps or knows what they're doing with that or just wants to make some pretty pictures for Akisterson, hit them up. Hit them up and... They've got you good. Um, so, yeah, the Condor makes a lot more sense once you have the sound to it. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a different game. Let's see if this hooks up right. Um, by the way, uh, Condor, that is Connor Sherlock's game, and it is about uh, jetpacks and free running in a cyberpunk place that is very mysterious. I highly, highly recommend it because I've played it a lot and it's very fun. But uh, this is Baz Bazalth. Don't trust the signs. Once upon a time, on a planet far, far away, lived some cute and peaceful creatures called Gloopsies. They were happy and innocent, living a dream life. Well, almost. Demons, you see had the bad habit of repeatedly destroying everything. Fortunately, the story doesn't end here. One morning, an old stranger appeared out of nowhere. He made a promise. A promise of revenge. With the help of a new ally. We need to fight evil with evil. Don't trust the signs. So, that was Buzz Off. Uh, let me find some more information for you guys because that was cool. <laughs> Every time we do one of these trailers, I'm like, well, that was new. I've seen something new today. Um, uh, yeah, they have a whole hype site, uh, and since I've now got, I should have, uh, I thought I had Hitbox over, open, but I guess I don't, uh, but bazalth.com, B-A-Z-A-L-T-H, really easy to find. They're on green light, and they need help. They've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, and that, uh, that narrator, right? There's so much going on there. Some incredible wallpapers. And uh, Brothulu over here in his hoodie doing what he does. So, uh, <laughs> from what I've seen, another one of those like pre-rendered cutscenes extravaganza, uh, which is the best way to do it, just saying. Uh, it makes it a lot more fun for me having just soft, sultry narrators in the back. We have uh, what looks like a guy just laser beaming with crystals all over the place, which is a sport that I highly recommend. So uh, laser beam crystal sports death is huge right now because it's in season, right? It's, it's almost summer. That means laser beam death season's on. Um, but yeah, they've also got a just beautiful website. Everything's just gorgeous here and super exciting. Uh, looks to be one of those kinds of uh, Unity developed games with uh, a whole bunch of people involved that are just kind of the right people for the job. Um, so, <laughs> the narrator, the chills. Yeah, no, totally. It ended up being very different than you expected, though, DW. I believe it. Um, yeah, it has, has a very epic scope uh, on that on the front end of that trailer. And then once it cuts to the gameplay stuff, you're like, was that, 
okay, okay, something different. It's not exactly what I was, uh, what it looked like it was going to be doing. But at the same time, it's like, well, it kind of looks like Crystal Laser Beam Diablo 3, so that was actually kind of what I was expecting, wasn't it? And that's what that's what we were all expecting. Um, so yeah, Batsalf. Batsalf.com. It's kind of like Batsalts.com, which would be a strange <laughs> site. <laughs> uh, Batsalf.com. Um, so I've got another, I've got another website. Check this website out. This is the Frost Rune, in case you don't read uh, a strange English font. Uh, this is the Frost Rune in Gaelic Rune kind of styled font base. Looks gorgeous. But then when you scroll down, you're like, oh, the fun countryside. Look at all the things and some gross guys stealing my chest. And bam, text. You're not getting warmer. This is so mysterious. Explore the ancient Norse myths and riddles, a point-and-click adventure game for iOS. And you're going to explore the ancient Norse myths and riddles. And then bam, more screenshots. Wait, it's a video. Okay, seriously, that was some it was even more cryptic than usual. But at the same time, it's a point-and-click adventure, right? So, like, you can kind of play with that. Uh, that was The cool thing about that, that trailer was that it was just so simple. Like, it was, like, five pictures, and they just kind of, like, faded in and out with some super spooky whispering noises. Super short, but also kind of hype. So uh, it really works with everything that they were going for. But it's the themes, the themes of, like, you're kind of... The right themes, right? If you're making your uh, your Gaelic point-and-click adventures, like, all right, let's look at death, let's look at relationships, uh, family, uh, let's look at how we deal with other people, um, let's look at themes of honor and uh, gaining wealth or uh, uh, not what is it? Um, not justice, but uh, uh, gaining honor basically as as kind of capital. Um, but yeah, no, the Frost Rune, uh, it looks like it's going to be kind of dealing with a lot of that stuff, hopefully. Uh, I'll need more Gaelic point-and-click adventures, so <laughs> it's not like that's the most over-bloated theme of all time. Um, and so that's really cool. That's a thing that we can do here with ND3. Uh, and so that's the frostrune.com, if you didn't catch that on the way in there. Um, oh, thank you, Hjort. Uh, thank you so much for that. Oh, sorry, I've been using uh, Gaelic when I meant Norse, didn't I? I'm so sorry. I totally, absolutely meant, meant Norse. Um, I'm going to blame that on sleep, sleep deprivation. Thank you so much. Norse mythology. The themes are still the same. I, I know my themes of Norse mythology. I uh, wonder if it actually gets into the sagas. That'd be cool. That'd be sweet. Uh, but I don't have any more information than that. It's so cryptic, right? You get that whole thing. Um... <laughs> runes are nordic yes thank you guys thank you for hitting me up um <laughs> there's the creepy hype and the frost rune hype oh bless you guys uh so i got another game to show you and we're going right through these we're just we're just bolting through them um and we're going to i believe the faster i get through these the more time we can spend looking at them over the next week and so we'll actually be playing a lot of these games after today and I'm very excited about that. What are you doing, God? What are you doing? Sorry, that's my fault. I, Sorry about that. I was clicked the wrong active. button. Sundogs. Sundogs is an open world text adventure at a, in a transhumanist solar system. And uh, this is by Nick Tringali, who's also going to be on that 3D art panel tomorrow at noon? 11? 11 a.m., I think. Maybe. It was, I remember it was really early. No, 2 p.m., excuse me. That's what time it is. Um, and there's not there's not a lot to see yet for Sundogs, but it's also kind of the point when it comes to 3D games. Most importantly, the thing about 3D games is... What is the thing about 3D games? 
uh, you're going to be doing dealing with a lot of screenshots uh, just to kind of see where things are going with it. We're exploring a low-poly vertex color art style for the game, and a big part of that are the planets, which will take up a huge part of the screen in the game as the player orbits around them. Oh, so we're actually going to be orbiting around planets. So when we're sun dogs, we're actually like orbiting around the kind of, that kind of sun dog, which is kind of a fun... Uh, because backwards it would be sun gods, right? Uh, usually you'd think the sun would be... Those who orbit the sun would be gods, but we are dogs. And I kind of... I, I'm digging it. I dig that title, what they did there. <laughs> okay. Starting from a cube was an attempt to force out some abstract forms. And while it certainly does that, the final result isn't that great. Obviously, it's a bit difficult to reduce our planet's six equal-sized faces. Though Antarctica, helpfully, sits on the bottom. China ends up colliding with northern Canada. Sweden sits next to the eastern U.S., I may use the cube method for other less recognizable planets. What I mean, Venus is just clouds. But for anything with recognizable features, we'll have to be more exact. The next attempt to make a flat projection cut over it and wrap it around a sphere. That's a funky design problem. Where you're just like, all right, I'm going to put all of the continents on uh, the faces of a cube. And then you're like, wait, wait. It works for the continent of Africa. It works for the continent of Antarctica. But then you run into like, Europe and Asia, North America. And it's like, oh, that doesn't quite work right at all. So cool. This is something that is very early in development, obviously, as uh, this is some do. But uh, Nick Tringali, twitter.com backslash Nick Tringali. Um, if you have any questions for him about the game, please don't hesitate to ask him. He's going to be here tomorrow to talk about probably the game, probably his design strategies and stuff like that. Um, but there's a lot of cool things in there. I'm going to show you guys another trailer, though. This is a quick trailer called The Hit, a multiplayer stealth shooter set in an open world city. Kill your target. was the hit that was really funky so just so concise so little the information that we get uh by the way that's on green light and yeah there's some interesting stuff being there you can tell that the game like this has been designed uh originally as kind of like some ideas that was like hey let's put a bunch of npcs in a city and see what happens let's uh start building out a city and making some cars on the road and making it give it this uh like low poly uh sorry not low poly low texture aesthetic um but only on the people and only on the cars everything else has high texture type things so all the streets have their roads paved out and are very textured all the buildings have uh, very textured faces there's a lot of detail involved in those but all the people and all of the cars are totally spare uh and it comes through in the design because the design now of the game itself is all about identifying people based on very specific uh, attributes, right? Hair, uh, it looks like hair, skin color, clothes they're wearing. Um, I don't know if it even goes much more deeper than that. But like that kind of self-made restriction uh, where they don't make the player look for like super specific details on a person to find their victim. It's just like, let's put you out in the world. Let's give you a bazillion NPCs to look through. Um, and go to town. It's like, it's kind of cool, actually. Oh, Markivis, the you're saying that the green light excitement's so low nowadays and there's still hundreds of cool games there? That's a weird, interesting kind of thing with that, like, hype machine. But hey, maybe that's a place where we can actually help out. And we have a space here at Indie E3 where 
we can actually uh, put up the things for these games and hopefully help support them too. Uh, it would just it would just really help everyone involved, uh, and that's what Greenlight was designed to be about. Um, although there's yeah, it's a very political game too, and so it can be very frustrating. I totally understand what you're getting at, Mark Davis, um, about how it's. The funny thing is, is like I'm not sure if it's about how hype Greenlight is, or whether or not it's just Steam not wanting to publish more games um, and not really helping out. Uh, I would look at the system first before you start blaming the individual people. Um, why? Where is where is Steam failing Greenlight rather than where are the people failing Greenlight? Right? That just is how it goes, right? Um, the link for that game is thehitgame.co.uk. Uh, I'm going to just type it in because it's so easy. Thehitgame.co.uk. Um, isn't that nice? Hitbox doesn't have lag. I really love it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking at this game, and I'm just seeing, like, all of this detail on parts of it. But then the people, they'll have, like, large masses of people uh, this game's kind of, there's one of the screenshots that shows it priding itself on, like, massive amounts of NPCs, and they'll kind of form this cool-looking blob. Uh, and I think that's a really interesting part of it. Um, oh, there's also interiors, too, that kind of work around that same premise of, like, basic, basic objects, but super textured surroundings and spaces. Uh, really interesting way of understanding the world around you. Thank you, Dan Stubbs. It's very popular on the popularity game thing. Silly meta game. Let's move on. Uh, we have this other game, All the Zombies. I don't know if we've talked about a zombie game today. And that... Oh, this is also Dan Stubbs. That's why. I was like, this looks so familiar. That would explain why. If you want to see something that's like the hit, but want to see it right... Right freaking now. Uh, ADFP.itch.io has your hookup with all the zombies. But I don't know if there's... These are all images, and I don't think there's any videos on here, which is totally fine. Look, we got this nice movie poster. Uh, but same kind of deal, right? Textured. Uh, all of these areas are super textured and super stylized. And then zombies. Actually, the zombies are really textured, too. Uh, they just have a stark color palette. Very bright colors uh well done cool there's just a little more i could look at i could really dig into this but i see they're doing that kind of movie score type of thing right uh movie trailers type of thing with just images which is cool um although <laughs> if you're gonna have words on the bottom of every single screenshot that nobody's gonna be able to read anyway right that's what those movie posters have the, the text that nobody ever reads Oh, cool, and this was for F This Jam. So they were purposely making a zombie survival endless runner game because they don't like zombie survival endless runner games. F This Jam, such a creative idea. So clever. Get people to explore systems and games they've never done before. Zotnip, Zotnip, please present for me, Bic. This is way cool. Mostly just because it's a gift with a bean head. Just saying. Here, uh, I'm going to hit up this official big trailer, and I'm going to read up on what you guys are talking about in chat.
that was Bic. That was Bic the game. <laughs> that was so endearing and charming and reminiscent of the old point and clicks, uh, like the LucasArts age point and click kind of stuff, uh, but not specifically LucasArts. I'm trying to remember the company that does these, but um, really a lot of their draw is like, let's explore all the ways that we can die in horrible, horrible situations by our own, <laughs> our own incompetence or accident uh, or just plain unluckiness. Um, tripping into terrible situations is the forte of this style. Uh, but I love that on the end part of it, they showed all of these uh, like gruesome deaths that are like, okay, these are silly ways to die and fun ways to die. That's that's genuinely entertaining. Um, Role-playing just weird situation that you get yourselves killed in. Uh, like, this is a story. This is definitely a story. Um, but then on the end half, it's got this like heartwarming like pick me up like Bic we're gonna make it we're gonna do it guys it's gonna be okay uh that's just straight up pacing guys that's just straight up pacing and the ways that they put that together in just the the format of the trailer so well done and so fun and playful just like the whole website itself is also just so uh full of gifts and stuff that's biggame.com by the way which is also in green light you can also all go light it up, light it up on the green light, hit up Zotnip and help that guy out. Um, we can't even see where they at on the green light. I have no idea actually what this site does. Um, uh, <laughs> I want to hit yes, but then you have to like sign in and I'm not on the right computer for that. That is a tasty mallow. Actually, is this a different? This is a different trailer. Can you help me? Go for it, guys. Enjoy. That was the extended trailer, it seems. Way cool. Um, nice. So it is the same as the uh, everything. I see that, I mean, it is like 50 more seconds long. Okay, so it is it is an extended form of the trailer. Totally. Oh, wait, no, sorry, excuse me. This There's another extended trailer on there that's actually like four minutes long. But we don't need to go through that. <laughs> Sorry, I totally got, showed you guys the same thing because I spent the first half of the trailer looking at chat and checking out on you guys. Um, but yeah, as someone said Sierra. Sierra was the name of the company I'm looking for. Um, but Sierra makes all these rad adventure games in the old times, in the old days, which is actually just like the late 80s and early 90s. <laughs> like really late 80s. That's awesome though. And that's a perfect, perfect place to draw inspiration from. Um, and I love that it's all centered around a kid. And he's like, I'm going to get into adventures and then get lobotomized or something. Okay, maybe it wasn't that endearing. Maybe the lobotomies weren't endearing. But you know what? I'm not a lobotomy critic. I can't judge these things. So, yeah. That was our fault. <laughs> Uh, AKA 20 years ago. Yeah, no, really. <laughs> Thank you, Indie Haven. <laughs> um, so I've got... Uh, oh, 48 comments. It's Oh, so that's a way of measuring how weak it is in votes or strong it is in votes. I'm not sure if that's weak or strong, actually. Um, yeah, King's Quest 1 was 89. Thank you. Thank you for citing me on that. I don't know. It's just like old and stuff. Sorry. Bad. Bad indie three running guy. <laughs> DJs. <laughs> like asking me if I made another swear. No, no. I just like diminished all of the early 90s of game design. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was my bad. Uh <laughs> Um so we've got I've got a couple more games. Um and I want to clean up tonight on nice notes. And so I've got this game. It's called Let There Be Life by Backward Pies, an independent game studio cuz it's indie 3, right? So Let There Be Life is a zen puzzle-like game. Puzzle-like. I love it. I love it. Y'all should explore new ways of understanding the word like and adding like to things. It's like, and then do some like really obscure reference or something. Uh, but Let There Be Life is $4 on Desura and on uh, Indie Game Stand. Yes. Fireflower Games. All these cool places. Is this the Humble Widget? So Humble. Let's see what this thing is. I want to see how they take this. But I want to see it. Big screen. Yeah, no, chat is, is just on fire. <laughs> uh, bees and shrooms. <laughs> oh, TJ's being, TJ's getting sassy. He's so happy with how everything's been going today. Good job, you guys. You made TJ happy, which means that we're all happy. Uh, <laughs> let there be life. I love this because it's, uh, you're managing an ecosystem, right? You're managing all of the ecosystem, but from the point of view of the tree itself and understanding how it grows. Uh, but it's kind of anthropomorphic in the idea of, like, uh, in real life, a tree doesn't grow uh, trying to understand the immediate responsibilities of the life around it. It it just it grows on its own life-like systems um, that can be independent or they can be codependent. That's trees. Trees are living things. They do things just like people do things. Um, just on a much more stretched out time scale. And that time scale definitely isn't usually matched with flowers or mushrooms or birds. Uh, but it's cool seeing it that you can kind of play with it in real time like that uh, and manage the systems of life all with the, all just through building out a tree. Um, and so it's kind of fun. That's a fun way of looking at it. <laughs> the roofing is so hot. Thanks, Roth. Thanks, Roth. I'm just doing professional critique. It's no big deal. Guys are so freaking sassy all the time. I <laughs> think so. I might need some sleep. <laughs> no. no, I've got more games. I just really want to show you. Uh, is there any other way I can hype that out? I just, I really love that. Like, for only, it's only $4. That's so, that's such a low price. <laughs> I am just always stunned. Um, But yeah, at Backward Pie... Let me try one more time. At backwardpies.com, you can buy Let There Be Life. And it's an independent game studio. Let's go on. This is the Counting Kingdom. This is, uh, looks like a tile-based math game. Let's get math. Hey, yo. I was looking for you, little video friend.
County Kingdom. It's a game about math. We just had a game about nature, and now we have a game about math and math systems. And spoilers are the same thing, because uh, nature and math are identical. Spoilers. Um, but yeah, you make math happen and kill monsters. In the Counting Kingdom, in my feudalist regime, I am king, and I tell you to count. And that's what we do. We got all our trebuchets out and our walls, and <laughs> we just blew stuff up. That's so fun. Love it. Um, <laughs> love that they have this little character in the bottom left corner that's just like, I'm going to do all the magic and kill you all because I'm the best at math. It's so adorable. Oh, it's early access. Okay, so it's already... It already went through all those steam processes, the, the hoops that they make you jump through, and it's ready to go. The cool thing about it is that I, if I'm understanding this right, at least to an extent, this is a kid's game, and we never do get enough uh, real, like, real children's entertainment. Um, and I know I'm not helping because I've sworn twice this stream. So I'm not helping because swears are the dividing line between adults and children. No, but seriously, uh, yeah, no, we, like, making media for kids, for youth, uh, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be about learning specifically, but just things that are accessible to kids. Um, there's actually some overlap between games that are entertaining and accessible to kids and games that are entertaining and accessible to adults who don't play games often. Um, and understanding that bridge has been something that really kind of fuels uh, a lot of indie design that is specialized in um, trying to attract completely different crowds, the non-gamer crowd. Um, and it's just basically like getting back to roots. It's like, all right, I want to create something that's playful, that's just generally playful. So uh, if it's generally playful enough to where kids enjoy it and think that it is playful and they understand how to play with it, then it'll probably also transfer over to adults. And that's kind of where you get like uh, Angry Birds. It's, it's accessible, and it's clear. Uh, it's not free. <laughs> Angry Birds is almost free, except for a little bit. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, like, that's a huge part of design. And that's one... Uh, the thing about the Counting Kingdom is that the things that it takes from normal standard games, it looks like it's actually taken from board games, specifically. You have a grid and things are put in little lines and boxes so that they are contained. Uh, they're not left all over the place. The pieces are not strewn about the floor. Um, you don't have to worry about con uh, controlling a person in 3D space. As fun as that can be, um, it's just it's difficult. It's not as easy. Um, I want to know what you think about creating games for the children's. Apparently someone has not been to grade school recently. That's fair. That's fair. I shouldn't. I shouldn't just assume what the kids of today need. Um, oh, Carmen San Diego Mac version for Incredible Machines. Ooh. That's actually a good trade if you've already beaten Carmen San Diego. If you just dropped Carmen San Diego, it's like, well, go to play Carmen San Diego. But Incredible Machine is really great. That's the learning company, I think, right? Those guys did amazing work. Um... Oh, uh, Reverend, you got an aid in a six-year-old? That math game would be fantastic for them. That's probably why it's greenlit. Uh, <laughs> the business behind it is that you can also get all the parents on board, too. Uh, that's That might be a little bit of a... So that's sometimes a reach. Sometimes you're just like, you know, this game's going to be great for the kids. And then all the parents are just like, I don't want to buy this for my kids, though. It's kind of like a, a weird manipulative jump that you have to make in your advertising. Uh, you have to advertise through the parents, not just around them. Advertising's weird, though. Um, I don't know if that made any sense, but I'm tired. Blame that. Uh, Miss Facetious says, Edu educational games work people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not a bad way of putting it. And there's always the, uh, the underlying critique that an uh, educational game, uh, because it's being so stretched out, between all of its forms by like trying to be fun and trying to be educational, teach kids uh, while expressing something or letting them play and express themselves. That's a lot of things for a game to do all at once. 
and sometimes it doesn't necessarily work that way. Um, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? All games are educational in some way. Talon, super optimistic. All games are educational. I love it. But sign's important. Sign's important. Thank you, Computer Freak. Uh, I'm going to hit you up with another game, because I think that was a good talk. Airscape, The Fall of Gravity. Check the flow on this. <gasps> How do I get to this? Thank you. That was Airscape. That was Airscape, The Fall of Gravity. I, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit picky on this one. I'm actually, I'm going to be, because I like it. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a little extra love and care and say that, um, I don't know about any of you guys, but it looked, it looked really fun. It looked really cool, but it also kind of made me just a little bit, uh, a little bit motion sick, a little bit fast moving. Um, and I'm not sure if anyone else felt like that or if that is something that might be a, a deal breaker to people. But um, especially because if I am understanding this right, this is something that's in production some way. Um, yeah, it's at uh, demo level right now. Um, but because this is something that's in production, uh, it seems like they've got their worlds figured out, but not quite the, the physics or how it's going to feel with the platform, which is a huge important part of platforming. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like, yeah, I think Talon, you might be right that that, um, that feeling might go away when you're controlling it. It also might be because I am like 36, 38 hours without much sleep. So <laughs> could also just blame me. I ran a red light today. <laughs> I was not supposed to say that because, uh, oh. Yeah, he told me not to say it, and I was like, too bad, I'm saying it, because I'm asleep. Um, okay, but seriously, uh, about Airscape, um, the the thing about uh, platforming systems is that they can be very, very, very specific on their uh, details, uh, and that little things here and there can uh, make a game go from something that's like, this is really cool, and this works, to this is the, the this feels fantastic, Uh kind of your your super meat boy and braid styles of like those those nuances on acceleration and velocity patterns in jumping um where it's not just like you get so high and then gravity flips or the velocity uh value the velocity variable flips or something <laughs> we're just tuning in to watch someone melt and die <laughs> thanks guys thanks for all the, the the fun it means a lot uh <laughs> You're not too far off, actually. But I'm going to sleep tonight, which is awesome. Um, but uh, where's I going with this? I had a like main trajectory. Um, but the thing is, those are things; those are values that you play with, and they're super, super simple. And so, uh, if anyone else was having anything, uh, if they had the same kind of feeling with it that I did, which might just be from watching it, which I think is a very fair point. Um, 
because it, everything else about it was like, oh, this is cool. Um, all of the little lighting things that they did, your your cute little octopus guy goes into shadows, and then suddenly there's like this bullet hell thing going on. It's like that's a great use of uh, restricting light, um, doing stuff like that. But um, it's not even so like Talents put the point that it, it kind of they call it precise, preci precision gameplay. Um, and I don't know if I would necessarily go with precise, but uh, almost there's almost like a liberatory idea of it um, where you feel like your jump is intentionally designed to do exactly what you need to do at the, at the time that you do it. Um, and that's where you get that feeling of like, this feels right, um, is because you have the parts designed um and they're paced like uh that's what it is it's it's all about that micro pacing in a platforming game so you have uh com a complete control over the arc over the height over um how far you can go and how you can alter how far you can jump um and all of that is pacing on a very very micro cosmic scale you're like uh every single jump is going to feel like this um so you have meat boy that's very fast and fluid and then you have uh braid that is so much slower and methodical um those are just two examples mario is kind of that slow methodical thing but once you hit the b button you can speed up and you suddenly go uh almost chaotically out of control um and so all of those arcs and trajectories are very very uh specific to how those games are designed and so anyway that's probably enough about that. That's so much. That's so specific and stuff like that. <laughs> There's three dudes in the answer location. This is basically going 24-7. It's not going 24-7. We're going to be going down in probably 10 minutes or so for the night. And then we're just kind of 1 to 9 every day. So about 8 hours a day for a week or so. <laughs> Microcosmic. Thank you, Jobadiah. You've been on fire today, by the way. I didn't get to say that earlier. Just saying. You've been on fire today. Um... TJ was to just say, everyone's been on fire constantly, and thank you guys for all of the love. Um, talent, thank you. A good organic experience. I really like that word. I like that. So, Gallium, yay, sleep time in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't think there'll be anything more after this. Uh, I think we're going to call it a night so that we can focus on uh, all of the new stuff tomorrow that we're going to have lined up. And we've also got a whole... Right. You know what? Do you want to just come over here? We'll just wrap this up. Um, we don't have any things set up for this, but yeah. We just like I don't know, pop a squat or something. Okay. Oh, uh, your mic should be on already. Yeah, I hear it bouncing around and stuff. Okay. Um. All right. There are sums of us. There's literally dozens. Yes, there there are many of us. But yeah, honestly, like this this whole thing has been incredible. Um, we're getting ready to and close up and end everything right now, so we can um get get in contact with more people, set up some more of the panels, uh, plan out our next couple days ahead of time. Um, we got some people to pick up as well because we're gonna be doing some stuff with actual people around here. We'll have more people. Yeah, got got lots of lots of really great stuff coming in the next in the next like couple hours, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as as you can imagine, we're gonna be go we're gonna be streaming all of it through both channels as usual. Tomorrow is when the panels begin, and that's also we're we're running the indie three game jam right now. So if you want to get involved in that, you definitely should. So all those games are gonna be hyped up by the end of all of this. So. Yep, we're gonna be showing all those games off on the fifteenth. Just the just same thing that we've been doing here. We might even have multiple people to provide commentary. As as you remember, remember, we had some Let's Play folks in here. Might be able to get them to take a look at some of your games. So if that's something that you're interested in, get get on it. Game Maker's free. Um, if you go to the Jam panel, there's, there's some kind of offer about Unity 3D being free for mm -hmm. this whole thing, which is pretty awesome, and I need to probably look into yeah, that some we, more. Yeah, we need to look that into sounds, that. That sounds awesome. That sounds like way too awesome for us <laughs> to not be promoting the that hell out so of. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, we've also got the pirate cart trailer, uh, the pirate launcher. Yep. Uh, if you want to just put all your stuff into one place, it looks 
super fancy and nice. Exactly. It's um, we got you can, all kinds of great stuff. You know what the cool thing about pirate cart, uh, the pirate launcher, is that then you can just take that pirate launcher and like put it on a flash drive and give it to people. Yep. Holy crap! Exactly. I didn't think about that. That's a cool use. There's, case. there's, there's, there's like so many potential things that you can do with something like that, especially with, with the kind of creative people that we know and like everyone else knows in this community. Like that's, that, that's gonna be mm-hmm. huge for sure. Um, for the Game Jam info, I believe it is at uh, Game Jolt. So it is. It is at Game Jolt. You should be able to find it super easy from their main. If you, site. if you take a look at their Twitter account at Game Jolt, I'm sure they've got plenty of info on that as well. Um, you can also follow the hashtag. Uh, in D3Jam, which has mm-hmm. quite a bit of interesting activity going on in there Well, as well. I've been taking a look at that while paying attention to the streams and making sure everything's going good, going through emails, getting everyone set up for some of the panels that we're doing soon. It's all it's all going to be incredibly hype. If you want, uh, Talon says, uh, if you want ideas for a game to make, uh, just ask the people in chat. Yep. And they'll just crowdsource your game design. Yeah, you guys, you guys in chat have been fantastic. Can like, I just get like, uh, I just want everyone to just start tossing out uh, themes for games, things that they, that should be in a video game. Yeah, but just honestly, start throwing out stuff. I'll just look at them. Honestly, you guys are like one of the best stream chats I've ever had the pleasure of seeing. Like, yeah, I I, I figured that once we broke like forty like forty watchers, things were gonna get nasty, and like we've been at like a constant a thousand. Off and, and on, it's been amazing, and it's been amazing. Like you guys have been so like fantastic. nobody's nobody's been attacking each other. There's not there, nobody's been like bickering. Nobody's been like breaking any rules or anything you like know why? that. They're watching E3. Exactly. All those people are watching E3. We did it, guys. We found a nice little bubble for a week. <laughs> we have we it. Got this thing. We have it, but we just ride it straight to the sun. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get ready to shut down over here so we can get everything else. They're situated saying revolution. The They're saying gotta catch them all. Uh, arcade shoot 'em up Snidey style, mm-hmm. auto erotic asphyxiation. Of course. Um, ooch, ouch. And, yeah, these uh, are all great ideas. Uh, the burn. first level is a fake loading. Yeah, screen. I like burn. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like I like three three emoticons. That's that's a good idea for for a game, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, it's tag. Yes, it is. It's tag. Yes, it is. It's Connor. Connor, we were showing your game earlier. It was the first thing that we showed for this thing because you tweeted at me. Yeah, we've we've got lots of really great submissions. That Connor, honest, honestly, that I like a lot of these submissions. I haven't even had a chance to look at myself personally. So some of these are even like surprises for me, where I'm just like, "Wow, we got that!" Yeah, like, "Wow, how did nobody hear about this?" You know. Yep. And that's 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 what we've been since we started streaming at one PST. That's how we're gonna be until Monday, Monday all, to Monday, all week, all um, week. Connor, can you put the link to your game in the chat room? Because I think that'd be just a great way for all of the people to transition out of the stream here into playing a really inspiring game. Yeah. Uh, because as far as like Unity goes, that game, just once you finish playing it, whenever you decide to finish, because it's very open-ended when the game ends for you, um, you are always just like, you know what? I could make a game. And it could be just as cool as this. Yep. And that's always what it, it feels like. Yep. Um, ooh, Teg uh, is also talking about the Unity trial thing. Okay, so maybe it's a trial thing for the game jam. Maybe that's what's being hyped. I We need to look more into that, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank yeah, you. thank had you the stream, so much. We've had the stream going this entire time. I don't think we've even went down once. 12 hours. 12 hours. Straight. We had we had, uh, we had had um the Warp Door stream earlier. Mm-hmm. That was really good. Big ups to everyone who was involved in that. You guys did a really great job, and you also gave us something to fall back on while we were getting technical issues set yeah, up. So yeah, that's that's ass. always great for sure. Um, <laughs> sorry, Teg, I wasn't saying that there isn't an act. There is an actual ending to the game, um, but there's also like a lot of things going on in the game. Or at least last I played it, it's actually been developed a whole bunch. He's calling me out. I'm getting called out. It's fair. That's un- that's fair. It, it was bound to happen at some yeah. point. Yeah, it's been just call outs all day at yeah. Indie Three. Condor, thank you. That's the name that I was looking on. We, we Let's got, end the stream with some get on top. We we got callouts <laughs> at the host. We got callouts all day at Retsu Talk. That was that was really good. We had Retsu Talk. I'm in the I'm, of the day. I'm really happy that worked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, like like I was just I was just sitting there like this is gonna be like one of the most awesome surprises in the world. And then like it launched and it was just like oh! like I'm just like I'm trying not to scream when like right when fucking diabetes went, which is like hey everybody welcome to Retsu Talk. I was just like it happened. We did it. Real. It was great. We'll just like puff our cigars and put our smoking jackets on. We're like, 
We did it. Yeah. Ah, uh, I mean, yes. I wasn't. I wasn't do that. Uh, I was. I was too busy, you know, pacing around all over yeah. the place. Like, this is happening. This is happening. Oh my God. But stuff's gonna go wrong. Stuff's gonna go wrong. It's gonna be great. It's going. On. Yeah. Red awesome. Red Sea talk was really great. They it were was. On fire. It was. It was definitely like. They were on fire today. Yeah, it was great. Um, we're gonna be sending them the video and the audio, so you'll be seeing it on their channel in a couple days as well. Yep. So if you if you missed any parts, or if you want to like link it to your friends who may have missed it, you know. Feel free because we're we're really we're really happy that happened. Big ups to Slow Beef and Diabetes, of course, for doing that with us. Yep, and we got more too. Especially on like such a last, especially like such mm -hmm. a last minute thing. They were just like, yeah, sure, go for it, uh, and then we've bam. We also got um, Chip and yeah, Chip and uh, Ironicus. Ironicus. Yep, we got on, we got them on actual panels, so they'll be they're on panels. They're also on board. We could probably just send them a bunch of game links, and they could just start firing away yeah so like if you if you games. have some lpers that you want to send some games to like at this at this point we basically established the framework that you should start doing that now because and we're going to talk about that some more mm -hmm. with um with ironicus yep and all all them at a panel yep which establishing is going to be yourself which is going to uh, be sometime establishing on, devs with let's players yep which is going to be sometime on wednesday or thursday it's going to be it's not going to be like a, a late night panel like this as much as it's going to be it is going to be yes. around uh the kind uh, of late uh, hours. Please, please post the IH schedule. I think. Yeah, Indie, Indie Haven schedule. Indie yeah. Haven has a schedule up. Um, I'm not sure if it's up to date right now, but it it's better than it's better than nothing, basically. Like I I'm still working on getting our ourselves like a, a schedule, a more updated schedule of like each day separately. Yeah, and it was a lot of work on that too. Yeah. Anyway, we've got work ahead of us. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do before we go again and do this tomorrow. So I'm gonna let you guys go. Mm -hmm. We're going to get this going, and we're going to just get back to work and never sleep again. Thank oh, you. it's on Tumblr. So yeah. Lonnie hooked us up. It's on there. Tumblr. It's on Tumblr. So, yeah. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will for sure be seeing you tomorrow at 1 